All right, now I'm gonna walk through the initial setup for the input sequence and Morse code puzzle modes. Uh, it'd be a good idea to have your quick start guide or manual next to you so you can follow along with the setup steps. So first thing we gotta do is power it down. Normally you'd have a barrel connector plug here that you'd pull out, but in this case we've got it wired in here, so I'll pull that out. Gonna hold the three button down and power it back up. Just gotta keep holding that button until the mode light starts blinking blue like that. Okay, now it's showing the current state of the first blue step. So it's showing one. So if you look at the quick start guide, that's input sequence. So if you wanted to change it, you would just use this knob to move the light around. So we want it on input sequence, so that's fine. So now you hit three to go to the next step. It starts blinking two times. Number of inputs. In this case, we want we have six buttons connected. So we're going to use six. Number three is the output one mode. This is where you choose if you're using a mag lock, uh, if, if you wanted to uh, have the emergency stop feature enabled, if you wanted to unlock when the puzzle fails or you know, if you don't want it to. Uh, you can also tell if you just want the output to turn on when they succeed or if you just want it to pulse on like you'd use with a solenoid latch. So we're gonna choose the mag lock with no e-stop option, so we'll do three. Now we'll go to next step. Number four is the auto reset timer. Uh, in this case, we'll set it to automatically reset after the sound stops playing. So that is option two. The last one is the game timer. We're not gonna use that, so we're just gonna leave it at one, which is off. Now, this is where you gotta pay attention. So the input sequence and Morse code puzzles have a few extra steps. So as, you, as indicated by this green blinking light, we have to find the table for the input sequence of Morse code, make sure you're using the right one because they each have their own table, and jump down to that table. So one green blink is the fail on input timeout option. So this is the timeout between presses. So if you want, say, like a maximum two seconds between one button press to another, you would just slide this up to two seconds. If you wanted it to be six seconds, you could go to six seconds. If you don't want any limit at all, you would just leave it at one. This one works a little bit differently. So this is the option setup. This one is a toggle option, okay? So in this case, you can see the little light flashes briefly. When we turn the, the dial, we get to choose between one and four. So Number one is fail at code length. So if we have a four input code and they press any wrong four buttons, it will immediately fail the, the, uh, the attempt at the puzzle solution. So like to turn one of the options on, you would just hit record. So that option would be enabled. Light two is fail on bad input. So that would immediately fail the puzzle if they hit any wrong button. That's sort of a way, if you want them to be able to figure out the puzzle solution by trial and error, you could turn that one on. All right, so they just toggle off and on by tapping the record. Number three, allow simultaneous input. So that's if you want them to be able to hold two buttons at the same time for one of the puzzles. And number four is RFID chatter filter. So some relays on the RFI, on uh, certain RFID uh, setups, they sort of chatter. They go click, click, click when you put the tag close to it or, or remove it. So if you enable that, that basically tries to filter out that clicking so it doesn't become multiple inputs in your sequence. All right, so now after that's all said, we'll just fail on, fail at code length, we'll enable that one. So there we go, fail at code length is now enabled. So the next step would be to record the solution. So you just tap record. Press, I just pressed the four buttons there and stop recording. Now, you repeat those sequences, done. So that would be the setup of an input sequence puzzle. Uh, we have sounds in there already. For you to add sounds, what you would do at this point is you would take your card out, go to a computer. You'll see a bunch of folders on that card with readme files in there explaining where to put your sound files. All right, and that's it.